Hey bosses, welcome back to my channel and today I'm here with Dimitri from 7 Seas Trading who is going to uh, teach us a little bit about how can you buy or sell your boat from wherever you are and send it to any, any, any place in the globe. So Dimitri, thank you very much for uh, receiving me here, uh, allowing me to transform your uh, office in our studio so we can talk about and give uh, people some value. Quite exciting, my friend. Yeah. I'm actually pleased to have you in the offices and it's an opportunity for us to um, educate our clients, potential clients, about the process of purchasing the yacht and transporting the yacht. In my honest opinion, um, if you take American market for yacht transports, and yacht sales, they correlate very closely with mm -hmm. each other because many of the buyers that end up buying yachts that are listed on the market in the United States are foreign buyers. Mm -hmm. And if I had to put a number on that, I would say at least 50% or more uh, buyers that you would find in the United States, particularly Florida, mm -hmm. would be some form of uh, tied to some kind of foreign company or foreign okay. entity or the foreign buyer in general. So okay. in my opinion, uh, yacht transport is an integral part of selling a yacht. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, many of my clients are yacht brokers. Mm -hmm. And uh, these inquiries come to uh, my company at the developing stages, whenever somebody has a listing for a yacht and they get contacted by a client overseas, whether it's a Brazilian client, a European client, Australian, or any one of the above. Uh, first thing the client wants to know is, well, what's the listing price of the yacht? Well, it's X. Mm -hmm. Well, how much is transport to yeah, my home course, jurisdiction? Yeah, yeah. yeah, How much is transport to Brazil? And that ultimately will affect their purchasing decision yeah. because yeah. they would compare uh, the transport prices against the uh, listing prices in the United States and against listing prices for similar yachts mm -hmm. in their home country. Yeah, but the we, we, in, in that sense, right now, and that's why um, I'm pushing this kind of content, uh, Brazilian economy is not very good, right? So, th the 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 um, boating industry, mm -hmm. of course, is going to slow down because first you have your your biggest needs, your house, your everything, mm -hmm. and then you have your kind of um, luxury items or, t or toys because sure. this is it is what it is. Uh, big boats and yachts, they are they are toys. You you buy it either to do business in some ca cases, but mostly to, to have fun. And when the economy is not very good, you stop using them and trying to sell, but everybody's trying to sell. Everybody now in Brazil is trying to sell a boat. But they can't because everybody's trying to sell. If everybody's trying to sell, nobody wants to buy. So um, I was talking to a couple of clients that I have in Brazil and I said, look, why don't you list your boat with me and uh, we can sell it anywhere in the world. Doesn't matter if they are in Brazil because they are going Correct. to see the pictures. Uh, if someone is interested, they can um, they can buy the boat and you can just ship the boat whatever they want. And the first quest they do is the same. So how much is this boat there? Correct. And it's good because with the system we can check everything, how much the boats are selling here in Europe, in, in Brazil and Correct. everything. Correct. But 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 the most important thing is like I just got um Azimuth forty eight right. for sale. Um, because of the currency, right here it's between four hundred and eighty and five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. In Brazil, it's two point something million reais. Reales. Mm -hmm. Yes. But right now, I don't see a lot of people forming a line to spend 2.5 million reais to buy a boat. Well, what's the conversion ratio between reali? Uh, At this moment, it's five point something. 5.3 the last time I checked. So it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. it's even, 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 even if you are wealthy, mm -hmm. in the moment that the economy is freezed, and you just take 2.5 million out of your ca of your bank account to buy a boat is not the best thing to do. So that's why uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm helping those people in Brazil to sell their boat because as you said, the market here is very good. Uh, different from Brazil, uh, a lot of people, uh, I know a lot of people here that they have apartments in Brico in those very dense areas and they have boats and they are living in their boats because they don't have a, they want, they don't want to deal with their, their their neighbor, so uh, uh, it's, it's 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 a great it's a great deal, and the market here is one of the biggest. I, I I think is the biggest in the world, right? It is indeed one of the biggest in the world. I notice I follow you on what you're saying regarding the difficult economic times and mm -hmm. that people's priorities may not be precisely on the leisurely items. However, a lot of these people that uh, have um, net worth in the millions mm -hmm. or billions, they are not 
as largely affected by this pandemic and by the economic downturn. Some of them are making a killing now. Yeah, of course. And uh, for them, their toys is a symbol status. Yeah. And they're not really stopping, you know, buying their toys or trading their toys. At least on my end, in the yacht transport sector, we have seen a, a decrease in yacht transport jobs from March until May. Mm -hmm. And we are back up and running now, mm -hmm. uh, starting from like basically middle of June. Okay. And we've seen increases uh, in numbers of yacht transport requests and contracts going forward for mostly July. Mostly be between which regions in the world, from where to where? Uh, mostly from back and from Mediterranean. Okay. Between Mediterranean, which I am defining as, you have Eastern Med and Western Med. Western Med would be Genoa, Italy, mm -hmm. Palma de Mallorca, Spain. Eastern Med would be something like Turkey or Greece. Okay. Uh, boats coming from the United States there, we had mm -hmm. three full sailings in the past 45 days. Okay. People trying to catch the remainder of the season. Okay. That they wanted to bring those boats there, spend some time in the Med, and then come back. Okay. Now, check this out. They recently announced a couple of days ago that Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show is going to be on. Oh, really? For end of October. I, nice. I, I, I got the advisory yesterday. That's very I good. I got psyched about that. Yeah, very good. Because, because Palm Beach was canceled, right? It was, it was canceled. Virtual. And then check this out. Monica was canceled. Cannes was canceled. Normally, the way this works, all those yacht builders okay. that are Italian, Spanish, Turkish, they first they go to Monaco and Cannes, they exhibit their yachts there, which is like end of September, okay. and then the same yachts, if they don't get sold, they go to Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. Okay. Well, now, these yachts, <laughs> they don't have that option, so they're going to be taking them to Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. Oh, that's very nice. And that's that would nice. create uh, a whole thing around uh, Fort Lauderdale and it's the going traffic. To be even bigger than already is. I think it is. I mean, they're talking about taking precautions, yeah. and there's concerns with that, obviously, hopefully, uh, What's our governor? DeSantis? Hopefully he doesn't shut it down. Yeah, uh, well, he said a couple of months ago that he's not going to walk back. So, uh, he, he's not going to walk backwards. So once he's open, I think he will maybe enforce the, um, the, the measures to uh, keep people wearing masks mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, but I, but I, I don't know. Uh, based on what he said, I don't think he's going to shut down everything. So here is what that's going to generate. If all goes well, usually for the boat shows, you have a uh, number of people from worldwide arriving mm -hmm. for the boat show. Mm -hmm. Now, they obviously come in for the boat show, they look at new yachts. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they look at all the used yachts mm -hmm. as well. So the exposure for somebody who wants to sell the yacht in Miami area during this time frame, call it from September end until November, uh, would be going up as well. Exactly. So if you got people overseas that are having difficulty selling their yachts in Brazil per se, there may be a good sense to bring them now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, secure a sleep in advance because obviously finding sleeps during the boat show times is going to be next to impossible. So it pays it's to have... It's October, so we're already almost there. We, we're coming up. So we need to be looking into it, you know, which sleeps we can find. Maybe even getting creative and looking at private docks for people's vacations homes that people don't use. I have two homes in Broward <laughs> that I can <laughs> that use, you can to, can use. To, to give exposure to your boats. You could make a killing yeah. for that because, yeah. I mean, yacht brokers want, want that space. Uh, we need that space because boats come in and sometimes they're transshipped. Mm -hmm. For example, I bring a yacht from Mediterranean okay. that goes to Victoria, British mm -hmm. Columbia. The ships don't go directly, okay. so we discharge them in Florida and then they have to wait three, four weeks to get loaded on another cargo vessel that would go west coast. Mm -hmm. So we always need dockage. Great, mm -hmm. I have two. Two beautiful houses, one in Hollywood and one in Lighthouse. That's House. great, we should, we should we, talk we, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, And um, talking about this, so uh, let's, let's use the boat show as an as, um, as, uh, um, um, uh, urgency for, for those people that mm -hmm. might sell their boats here. Right. How long does it take to bring a boat from Brazil, let's say the main ports like Sao Paulo or, or, or uh, Santos or Rio, mm -hmm. to here to Fort Lauderdale, roughly? Generally, uh, if you're talking about Santos, Rio, or Recife, th those would be the main three ports that we would call or the ships would go to. To Fort Lauderdale, uh, you're looking at approximately 11 to 14 days. 11 to 14 days. For cargo vessel. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Once is shipped, right? Because I know uh, the process of uh, in Brazil with the customs and everything might take a little bit or you're already uh, taking into account the time on, on the custom that's going to be there? I'm taking into account the actual transit time of the, the cargo transit vessel. transit time, okay. Once that loads on board the deck Got of it. a cargo freighter, 
till the time it discharges, based on the nautical speed of the cargo ship is usually 13, 14 knots, and mm -hmm. the distance between Brazil and Fort Lauderdale, you're looking at 11 to 14 days. Of transport. Of transport. Okay. And once you get here, after those 11, 11 days, um, how, how, how long does it take to um, actually uh, you take the boat out of the customs here in the U.S. and you can actually sell it or use it? It's instant, my friend. We do customs clearances <laughs> before the ships arrive. Oh, okay, so when, once it's here, it's done. The ship stays in the port 24 to 48 hours. So customs clearance is filed with customs brokerage okay. before the vessel arrives and okay. before the yacht arrives. So when it arrives, we basically do live discharging. We utilize ship's cranes. Mm -hmm. that are mounted on board of the cargo vessel and within 24 hours all the boats that are on the cargo ship will be discharged and the ship is going to leave. So if we do customs clearance ahead, which is 99% of the time is the case and the requirement, mm -hmm. upon arrival a client can take possession of the boat immediately. Oh, that's great. And the paperwork will be cleared. On the customs, I should note, depending on the entry uh, purpose, let's say if you are bringing in a boat to be show showcased mm -hmm. in the United States, you could apply for a temporary entry permit. Okay. What, what that does for you is you don't pay duties okay. if it's a foreign boat That's with a right. foreign flag, and it gives you a cruising permit for 12 to 18 months. Okay. And uh, basically, your responsibility as the yacht owner is to declare to U.S. Customs that this boat is coming in temporarily for the purpose to be sold, and in the event if it is sold to the U.S. buyer, mm -hmm. this particular U.S. buyer would be responsible for paying customs duties. Now, a U.S. buyer, if he's a, f a foreign mm -hmm. buyer, if it's a foreign buyer, he can flag it in the Marshall Islands, he can flag it in the BVI, he can flag it wherever he, he is from, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't be subject to import duties. He is only going to be subject to import duties if he wants to get U.S. flag, if he okay. wants to get a Coast Guard certificate, U.S. title for the boat, then you pay the duties. But duties are not too bad in the United States. You're going to be surprised. How much? Guess what, what's, what's the import no duty. In Brazil, it's, everything is 100%. Over here, it's 2.5%. 2.5% on the, the stated value, which you know the owner has to declare. Okay. It has to be within the reasons. You can't declare a 48 azimuth that's worth 500 mm -hmm. and say it's 50,000. That's, mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you buy the yacht for less than market value because of the conditions and you declare that she's $300,000, you multiply that by 2.5% roughly. So you're looking at what? $7,000? More or less. And that basically Very takes cheap. care of this. Uh, import duty mm -hmm. and you now you have a u.s coast guard documented vessel which is a huge advantage if you did that after getco before the boat arrived mm -hmm. then selling it in the united states market would be more advantageous because many of the buyers are united states buyers okay and they don't want to buy a boat with foreign flag they prefer to buy the boat that's already you know duties paid everything and the united states coast guard okay versus uh, if you got somebody from italy who is buying the boat to him is an advantage too because maybe he will keep the board here and, and doesn't have to pay duties to his and duty. there is no disadvantage for him on that effect because if he was to buy this board with u.s coast guard documentation mm -hmm. and ultimately send it to italy to mm -hmm. his home country it's still fine he can get cruising permit now in italy okay for the united states coast guard registered vessel and uh and then not pay duties in italy mm -hmm. or he can choose to change the flag upon arrival to italy and pay the italian duties or the EU duties, mm -hmm. which at this point are something like 18%. 18? Mm -hmm. So here is 2.5 and, and there is 18. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Brazil is 100, so go figure uh, yeah, that out. Yeah, I'm I, I guessing 100 because I, I know that to, to import cars is 100%. It so probably would be similar. Yeah. And another thing to check in Brazil um, would be some of the countries worldwide allow you temporary entry for okay. the yacht for the purpose of cruising, transiting. Some countries don't. Mm -hmm. uh, if Brazil allows cruising permits, maybe you don't need to pay 100% duty. Let's say somebody from Brazil bought the yacht in the United States mm -hmm. and he says, I'm going to use it six months in Brazil and okay. six months I want to be in the Caribbean, maybe I go to Italy with it, which, you know, we can help. Yeah. We can load the boat in Santos and go to Genoa for him yeah, for the course, summertime. Yeah. We need to check on that. If, if the Brazilian authorities would allow this without having to pay duties or registering the boat in Brazil for that matter, and paying high import duty because that would yeah I think so because I see a lot of uh, I don't know maybe there is a difference between uh, motor motor yacht and sail yacht mm -hmm. uh, but I see a lot of people going there sailing and yep. staying in Brazil for two months three months and they're coming back so then then there must be a treaty yeah, yeah, of yeah, some probably, kind prob probably yeah well there is a principal difference in some countries when you're sailing mm -hmm. and the type of permissions you receive from local authorities to transit uh, on your on your own bottom. 
mm -hmm. as a sailor, uh, basically, versus when the boat comes in on a cargo vessel. Okay. Yeah. That's to be rechecked, you know, because okay. some countries would say, yeah, you could come in, like Dominican Republic, for example. It says you could come in easily and apply for a simple permit from uh, Dominican Navy, okay. who is the governing authority for these permissions, and go into any marina in Boca Chica or Rio Haina area and be fine. But if it comes in on a cargo vessel, you go through the customs clearance yeah, process. Yeah, because then, then they understand that it's you are importing a boat. Yeah, the, and, they and then still, you, you could bypass it, but you need to go with the customs broker, you need to declare mm -hmm. this, declare that, it's a process. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand, I understand. In China, for example, forget it, no, no temporary entry whatsoever. Permanent no. entry, 100% percent That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Portugal, do you know? Do you do trades in Portugal? Portugal falls within the EU. Okay. So for European Union, you can get cruising permits, That's great. and you can do a temporary entry. And one, uh, a person that is like, like this client of mine, um, he, he's, he wants to sell his boat here, we listed his boat. What, would, what should be his um, um, uh, duties right now or precautions that he should take to when someone wants to buy a boat, he's mm -hmm. ready to ship it here? What, what's the main things that he needs to be concerned about? Well, first to off... Make it, to make everything smooth. My honest opinion, if he is going to list a yacht in the American market, he needs to bring the yacht first. Mm -hmm. How is he going to list it to, uh, in the American market if the yacht's in Brazil? What well, people don't, are not going to buy it on pictures. Mm -hmm. Is American guy going to want to fly to Brazil to buy the yacht? Maybe, but the likelihood of that to increase his chances of sailing in Miami would be reduced. But needless to say, you put it on Yacht World, mm -hmm. you know, which is a listing search engine like MLS for, for yachts, basically, uh, and then you have people that are looking at it that are in the United States, then they would contact your client, mm -hmm. or if you're a broker from Brazil, or if you have a license as a broker in Brazil, y and, and you have somebody in Miami that wants an azimut, you might as well sh show it to him, and you can tell him, listen, I got a comparable azimut in, in Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. It's a 55 for $560,000. I got one in Brazil. It's uh, the same thing, the same year, similar, you know, maybe less hours in the engine, less use, and it's 400000 Hypothetically, the shipping cost for the Razimut would be 55 feet by 15 wide, approximately 49,000 to 50,000 mm dollars. -hmm. So now you start looking into it. If you don't need to pay the duty right away, you bring in this boat that client buys for four plus 50. You are already what 25, 30 percent below than they're selling here, hypothetically. Yeah. Yeah. And that client might say, sure, maybe he will take a trip to Brazil, do sea trials in Brazil, uh, visit the local uh, broker, look at the boat, enjoy his trip. Mm -hmm. Because for some of these people, it's actually a life experience. Exactly. They buy the yacht because they want to have experience, and it is an experience to go to Brazil. The process of buying a yacht mm -hmm. is already experience itself. And so. something like that, you as a broker can put together easily. Mm -hmm. of if, you, if you have an American buyer, so maybe not necessarily bring the yacht right away, if mm -hmm. you do have a listing from Brazil, but at least make it part of your listings in the States, mm -hmm. and then whenever you offer in the yachts to people, make it visible. Mm -hmm. And then if you start seeing particular interest, it may be a better idea that you find a buyer first. Here is what some of the brokers do. They find a buyer or a distributor. Uh, they charge them whatever they charge them, maybe 20, 30 percent. Then they ask the owner to uh, carry the balance of the yacht until it arrives. Mm -hmm. When it arrives, upon inspection in the United States, the customer finishes the rest. Of course. And then that way you're not shipping a yacht in anticipation. Mm -hmm. Do I sell it? Do I not sell it? You got some money at hand and the contract that within 30 days the yacht will arrive and the client is obligated to finish the deal. If he doesn't finish the deal, <laughs> you got 20% and you basically ship the yacht for free. Of course, yeah. yeah. So that's not a bad idea. And um, um, is there a lot of bureaucracy to do that or is it just pretty easy to send the boat here or send it, ship it here or send it anywhere in the world? Generally speaking, no. I mean, we, we, we take pride in being uh, able to offer all-inclusive service. Mm -hmm. And using our agents all around the world, we handle customs clearances. Uh, main bureaucracy comes with paperwork. The actual yacht transport portion is fairly easy. You mm -hmm. bring a yacht alongside my transport ship mm -hmm. at the designated time. You know, my load master will be in charge of guiding the slings underneath the yacht when it's lifted. Mm -hmm. uh, the tender boat will take the crew back to shore. Mm -hmm. where, you know, they can go on about their day. So once you bring a yacht alongside my vessel, you don't need to worry about it. Of course. And if you don't want to bring it alongside my ship, then we have captains around the world that would actually help with that as well. And on, on that roughly estimate that you did based on the, 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 the square footage, which let's round it up, how, uh, 
roughly a thousand dollars per per foot per, per foot per linear foot per linear um, foot. Yeah, it would be. It's already including insurance and everything. All in. Okay. It's it's. I call that a lump sum, and uh, obviously. This, this equation would apply to uh, bigger yachts. Mm -hmm. If you have a 20-foot boat, I'm not going to charge you $20,000 to of ship course. a 20-foot boat. I'm talking about things over 55 and 60 feet. Okay. Once you start getting into 80 footers, 90 footers, 100 footers, that equation would apply. Okay. Smaller size yachts, we can ship in containers, for example. Mm -hmm. That's very effective. Mm -hmm. We can ship them on flat rack. Mm -hmm. A flat rack is like a platform 40 feet long. Okay. Uh, and it can put any boat up to 12 meters mm -hmm. and up to four and a half wide. Okay for a fixed mm -hmm. cost, which, mm -hmm. you know, from Brazil, it's a 40-foot boat, you know, on a flat rack might cost you something like 20 grand. So it's only 500 per foot. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the bigger boat, does it worth it to send by uh, shipping it or is it better to just bring the boat here sailing? This always comes up, my friend, especially when you're talking about catamarans okay. and sailboats because okay. the cost of sailing the cat or the sailboat is relatively inexpensive in relations to freight. And you take like a Lagoon fi uh, 50, for example, mm -hmm. uh, a cat. I mean, they sell these things across Atlantic from the factory. They build mm -hmm. them in La Rochelle area mm -hmm. in France. Mm -hmm. And a uh, skipper charge maybe between ten to $15,000 for a two-week cross-Atlantic trip. Mm -hmm. uh, my company would charge probably 23, 25, which is more. Mm -hmm. But you save on wear and tear. Mm -hmm. You save on any kind of possible problem which can happen while you're navigating 5,000 nautical miles. Yeah. Uh, whenever you're budgeting for transiting the yacht on your own, you're never going to get an exact price. Mm -hmm. So many factors in it. Mm -hmm. You think it's going to be two weeks. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? You run into bad weather and you have to pull into some places. You're looking at additional docking. Your captain isn't going to charge you a flat fee. He's going to keep telling you, well, my engagement is 500 per day. I was planning on two weeks. Now it turned out to be four weeks. Well, guess what? Your captain bill just doubled. Exactly. And then if you were on any kind of time you schedule. You need to pay all the expenses for him. Yeah. Um, he is gonna food, he is going to sit and milk it. What is he going to do? You know, he gets paid by, by, by the day, basically. Yeah. And obviously, he will produce his receipts and he will tell you what happened and how it happened. But mm -hmm. ultimately, you're looking we're at the two numbers. You take this lagoon, right, from France, for example. You could, you think in the beginning, the captain says, yeah, don't worry about it. It's a great deal. I'll, I'll do it for $12,000. And then he comes to me and I say 22. Oh man, you have $10,000 more. But by the time it arrives here, maybe that bill is going to be 23,000 because mm -hmm. it took him twice the time. Yeah. Or maybe his mass breaks in transit or he runs into some freak wave across Atlantic and all of a sudden you're out there cruising and bam, you got a 25 foot wave hitting you. Mm -hmm. That can happen. So in my opinion, there's value in it. To put it on a cargo ship because of wear and tear. Uh, if you're talking about motor yachts, and mm -hmm. especially bigger size yachts, like let's say you take a 150 footer that can cross from Gibraltar into Florida or into Caribbean on its own, a 150 foot yacht. Mm -hmm. I would charge probably motor, motor yacht. yacht. Okay. I would charge maybe 160,000, 180, depending on the size and value mm -hmm. for 150 footer. The captains are going to calculate it like at maybe 120 ish, so mm -hmm. about 25, 30 percent less. Mm -hmm. But again, the same mathematics apply. Are they going to get there in nine days? What's going to happen? Uh, and then ultimately, if you run the yacht for 3,000 nautical miles, you're going to need to do maintenance. Exactly. You'll have oil changes. Yeah. You may have to haul it out. God forbid something breaks in the route. And you are, uh, you know? in some sense, you are depreciating the boat because you yeah. are accumulating hours on the engine and everything. Uh, dead hours because you're not enjoying those hours. You're you would be. You <laughs> would be. You would be. And the question is how much value you would use. I mean, if it's an $8 million yacht, that had 60 hours on the engines, and then you bring it to Florida, now it's got 200 hours on the engines. Mm -hmm. It's not a new yacht anymore. It's not a new yacht. Right. And then, you know, to whoever's going to buy that thing, I mean, obviously, they might say, well, look, 60 hours, 200 hours, you know. Uh, so that's a factor to keep in mind. And a guy in Europe, a guy in Brazil that wants to buy a boat here, uh, a yacht here, and send it there, how, how, how can you help them to do all this process? I think we need to market it. Of course, they bought the yacht with me, and now they, <laughs> they need you to ship the, the yacht. I think my suggestion is you would introduce him during the negotiating stages. Like mm -hmm. if you have a foreign buyer looking to buy your yacht in the United States, or vice versa, a U.S. buyer looking to buy your Brazilian listing, mm -hmm. uh, introduce him right when, you, when you're starting. 
And then at the same time, it could be something as simple as you sending us an email saying, hey, Dimitri, this is uh, my client, uh, Raul, mm -hmm. looking to buy the yacht in Brazil from me or from Miami. Can you give us a quick estimate? Usually I can respond to you within three, four hours mm -hmm. and I can right away give them references for customs brokers, mm -hmm. which is what I would do. I have a template that goes out to a client that says, listen, to ship a yacht, this is what you need to do. This is your transport boat guide that shows you the process of yacht transport. These are my key agents in Brazil, my key agents in Italy, my key agents in Florida. Uh, this is your estimated charges, and this is your transit time. So he would be educated right away, and they will put you in a stronger position uh, to have that right then and immediately that the guy, uh, your client, it eliminates this uh, unknown factor. Mm -hmm. What are the customs clearances? How is it done? How much money to ship it? What's my overall cost? Because he's going to look at the overall economics mm -hmm. and compare buying a yacht in Brazil versus buying a yacht in Miami yeah. locally. And if you give him that, A, it makes you look professional, mm -hmm. that you know your game, and B, it uh, uh, builds value for your service. So we work hand, hand in hand with you. Yeah, of course in principle and then ultimately uh, when, whenever the transport happens once you close the deal uh, we handle all the transport aspects and you move on uh, to other things and, and better, better, better things that you're good at. The buyer or the seller they don't need to uh, be concerned about anything. You, in, in the case in Brazil let's say a guy is in the south of Brazil yep. his only job is to send the boat to one of those main ports the Correct. one is closest to him. Correct. Do you work with, that's the only three ports you work in Brazil? I mean, Santos, uh, Recife, I'm asking because and I'm, Rio. From, I'm, I'm from a, a, a part of Brazil, the south, uh, it's called Santa Catarina, and we have some uh, important uh, p ports there. Give me some of the names of those ports, Itajaí, maybe they're in the bill. Itajaí. Itajaí, yes. Yes, so yes. that's great because uh, most, of the, uh, most of the boating community are near Itajaí. I tell you how it works. Less than 20 miles from Itajaí. So. You need ships that have cargo into these ports. If mm -hmm. it's a major cargo port mm -hmm. in the Brazil that, that participates in the commerce of uh, ship trading and cargo flow, mm -hmm. generally what happens are uh, ships that come from the United States, they originate in the U.S. Gulf, mm -hmm. and they're carrying commodity from U.S. Gulf, like Houston, New Orleans, mm -hmm. into these Brazilian places. Okay. And then if they got cargo going to Itajaí, which is often the case, when they discharge their cargo, they're coming right back into the United States, so we can easily load the yacht from Itajai. Nice. If you tell me something like Santa Catalina, where there's no port or nothing in there, then obviously we yeah, need, to, no, try to, course, we need to try to bring it the closest. But also, Brazil is huge. Yeah, if is. you're talking about nautical distances from Itajai to Santos, it can be 900 miles, right? Yeah, if you're talking about uh, <laughs> Recife, it's even, it's, even, it's even further. So we can always see uh, where the boat is listed, where it's currently berthed, and find the closest port that we can offer to a client okay. as an option. That's very good. And the same thing in the States, you know, if, this, if the guy wants to go to New York and I can get a ship to New York, I, I, I take him off the ship in New York. Why would I take him off the ship in Florida? Of course. And, and, and let's say he's buying a boat out from Chicago because mm -hmm. Chicago doesn't have uh, beaches, but they have the, the, the lakes and mm -hmm. the... the the boating community there is very strong. Also in um, Ozark, of course, uh, also the, the Ozark Lake, it's, it's, it's very crowded with boats. If, if mm -hmm. someone buy a boat there, mm -hmm. where of course you don't have any ports there, Correct. Um, do you also assist bringing the boat from there, like from Chicago to New York, let's say? Certainly. Uh, here is what's going to matter. We have a service uh, that we provide with trucking as well. Mm -hmm. We employ... Um, oversized trucks, like, mm -hmm. you know, semi-trucks that are equipped with specialized uh, boat hauling trailers. Mm -hmm. They're basically concaved in the middle mm -hmm. and they ride four, six inches off the ground. Mm -hmm. So they're designed to stretch as wide as 675 feet long and they can accommodate a boat, a sailboat, for example. The biggest sailboat I moved over the road mm -hmm. was 65 feet long. Okay. So what you're limited with when you're moving over the road is mainly the overall height. Mm -hmm. If the boat is more than 15 feet tall, it would be more almost impossible to move it due to restrictions and bridges and things of, of that course. nature. But smaller size boats, like if you take a, I don't know, CRA 40 Express, mm -hmm. that thing is 14 feet tall. Mm -hmm. So I can easily take it from Brazil into uh, Florida and put it on a truck and take it to Lake of the Ozarks or take it to Chicago by truck. Or the other way around. If the boat is coming from Great Lakes and it's too tall to go by truck, uh, we have ships that actually go into uh, Lake the Ontario. The river? Okay. They go to Lake Ontario, okay. they go to Huron, 
uh, and they go into Michigan League. Okay. Because there is a cargo trade available in those ports uh, in Canada on Canadian side, like we call Savel, mm -hmm. which is next to Montreal. Okay. Uh, next up, we usually do the Sarnia, mm -hmm. which is right at the intersection of Huron and Ontario. Mm -hmm. And then we also go to a um, place called Burns Harbor, which is Indiana. Mm -hmm. It's a big cargo port there on the lakes. And so anybody who wanted to go theoretically from Florida into Chicago, they could ride the ship as well. Okay. And they would go up through the Atlantic, come by Halifax, go down St. Lawrence Canal, mm -hmm. St. Lawrence Navigatable mm -hmm. Canal, and then ultimately go through the locks, mm -hmm. past the locks, and end up in the lakes. That's very good. So, so that can be done too. So there's, there's no, a, a person that wants to buy or sell a boat, they have the whole world to sell to. They, they do. They don't need to sell only in their city. They can do whatever they want. They pretty much can, yes, that's for sure. Very good. Dimitri, mm -hmm. I, I think this was very informative. Um, I think there's a lot of people in Brazil right now that could take advantage to send their boats, uh, sell their boats here, mostly in Brazil. And of course, um, um, American buyers mm -hmm. can do great deals in Brazil right now because, as I, as, I, as I said, everybody in Brazil is trying to sell. And prices go down when everybody trying to sell. So, so maybe American buyer can uh, um, arbitrage on that. So the supply of boats in Brazil is what you're telling me is right now basically uh, it's a buyer's market, right? It's a buyer's market. Definitely. That's, that's it. very good to know. And it's, and it's for several reasons. Number one, the dollar is so high that everything mm -hmm. there is so cheap. Mm -hmm. And number two, Brazil economics, it's not very good and I don't think it's going to uh, come up very soon. So um, people are trying to uh, sell their boats to do better investment because there's a lot of oppor investment opportunity there at this moment. So they have two and a half million reais, mm -hmm. five million reais yeah. that are there in, in the form of a boat Correct. that they can convert in cash and do good real estate business, for instance, or buy companies or stuff like I that. I see what so, you mean. So, so it's, it's not that Brazilians, they don't want boat anymore, but when the economy is down, it's time to do good business. And if they have that amount of cash in terms of a boat, they can just sell the boat to someone and use the, that money to do more business there. So I think it's a great market. Well, to me, it seems as an opportunity. Here is what I can propose. Is that very expensive to list a yacht on Yacht World? Or is no. it basically if you have an account, you, you can list as many boats well, as if you they, want? If, if a person just go there and put on Yacht World, they mm -hmm. are going to be shown for about 3 million people. And if they use a broker, mm -hmm. this multiplies almost by 10. Like th 30 million people can, can see. So that. I guess my point is your, your brokerage. Yeah, of course. You, you go out there and you grab these people from Brazil and you market in Brazil. And you tell them, I'll use my MLS systems and I'll market your yacht in the United States with your permission. Here is a simple agreement, you know, listing no agreement. Cost, uh, no, no cost whatsoever. And then when you put in these things on the yacht world, at the bottom of it, you know, under description, you could say transport can be arranged via Seven Seas Yacht Transport. Here is the link to the website. Here is estimated charges. Uh, for this particular yacht, we can, we can write it down. If you're listing a 55 Isimut, we could say customs all included will be $50,000 to yeah. bring it to Florida. That's what Schedules and all that. That's what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, we have, we, uh, we, we are getting a lot of traction from there. Mm -hmm. Now we need to uh, get a traction from here to buy there. So that's what we're trying to that do. That would be awesome, man. Dimitri, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. It was and very exciting. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you very much for uh, teaching us about this. Anytime. You're always welcome. Come, come by anytime. Thank you very much. Hey, bosses. Thank you very much for watching this video. Check the link below to see more about 7C Yacht.